Well, Steve, we're here at uh, St. Augustine Airport in what we call real airplane row. Uh, I mean, between a you know, T craft and a Stearman, I mean, does it get more real than that? Well, it was fine. It was there were a couple of other airplanes here, but they're gone now. You got that Pitts S1S over there, and you know, Cessna 180 was in here. There were a couple of other Taylor crafts. We were the big 275. Jake scared them all away. Well, that's a fine uh, combination to put on a Stearman. I think it's the best combination. My second Stearman was a 450, and the first one was a 220. And the 220 is a fine airplane. That's what's original, mm -hmm. but uh, they're a little underpowered. The 275 Jake is just right. <laughs> Tell me why for you a Stearman. Well, I've had a Stearman 45 years, I guess. Uh, I grew up in South Florida, and Dad was an early uh, aviator, and my mother was an aviator, and I just got hooked on Stearmans early on. Uh, they, uh, that seemed like when you went down into South Miami, the uh, crop dusters were all flying Stearmans, and mm -hmm. so you got there and watched the crop dusters. They really are a good airplane. They're well built. If you have to buy a part for it, it part fits. If I take a part off of this and lend it to somebody on his steering, it'll fit perfectly. So it's a very good airplane. They built 8,558, I think, of them. And it's probably, I would say there's 500 of them still left. There's, there's quite a good community of Stearmans around the country. This particular airplane was at Maxwell Air Force Base during the war. It was the general's airplane. It had, uh, when it came out of the war, when it sold surplus, it had 300 hours on it total time. It was never used as a trainer. It was surplused out and sold in 1947 to Decatur Flying Service. Uh, they turned it into a sprayer. They also put the first 275 Jacobs on it, and I think this is probably the first 275 Jacobs conversion steerman in the country. They flew it until 1962. They parked the airplane. John Reed of Reed Cams, Reed, John's dead now, and John was a pal of mine, was in Atlanta. He had the airplane. He bought it in 62 and he was going to build a Grand National Champion. And he worked 22 years on it in his shop in his spare time. I destroyed my second Stearman on a wreck up in Atlanta. And John uh, said, well, why don't you take my project and finish it, and uh, you can have another Stearman. So John sold me this as a project. I finished it in eight months in 1989. And that was the first year it had flown since 1962. That was the end of that. But that's the history of this airplane. And I've had it. I've been flying it since 1989. It uh, won trophies and it uh, looked great and uh, after three or four years it started looking old as I fly it. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, at this fly-in, hey, I, won, I, won I won the People's Choice Award. First award it's gotten in 15 years. So that's really, that's been fun. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. What can you tell people about the overall ownership experience of a Stearman? For somebody who's looked at this airplane and in the back of their mind they've gone, man, I've always wanted to own one of those. Do it. Do not even think about it. Get a Stearman right away. If you want a Stearman and you can afford it, get flight instruction in it. If you don't have a lot of tailwheel time, and even if you have a lot of tailwheel time, get a couple of hours with somebody that's been flying these things. Mm -hmm. They are a little different on the ground. And it's an airplane that requires you to think feet all the time. Mm -hmm. Feet, feet, feet on the ground. Until it's tied down. Yeah, yeah. Once you're in the air, it flies like any other airplane. It takes a little rudder to, to start your turns, but after that it's uh, it's very docile. And of course it's almost bulletproof. There's almost nothing you can do to it to uh, tear it apart. I don't think, I've never heard of a Stearman wing coming off a Stearman in any kind of aerobatics, and I've got over a thousand hours. Not without hitting something first. Well, that's right. I've got over a thousand hours of Stearman time, and I so I've been in the Stearman community a long time. They're easy to work on. They're fun. Yes, they drip oil. You put a pan under it, and you catch the oil, and and that's one of the things you put up with. And you wipe it down. You try and keep it clean best you can. As far as buying an airplane, they're out there to buy. The the price is down. Here we are, September of 2010. The prices are lower today than they've been in a long time. What's the community like? What's the support and parts situation? The guru of Stearman parts is a place called Dusters and Sprayers uh, Supply in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I mean, they bought up a bunch of uh, surplus parts. When they ran out of the surplus parts, they got STCs to manufacture parts. And so even their manufactured parts fit perfectly. And then there's other people around the country that do various things. Uh, there's a brake modification. A guy named Dan Cumler at Leeward Air Ranch invented the uh, 
red line brakes, as they call it, for Stearmans and Staggerwings and the Howards. Dan sold the license to uh, Pete Jones in Mississippi. I think Pete is the guy selling those brakes now. Those are really a worthwhile investment. If, if I find that, that Stearman people are having trouble with their brakes, and they are a trouble. The original brakes are a troublesome brake. Mm -hmm. uh, you get them right, and they're fine for a while, and then they're not fine for a while. It's easier to just go ahead and bite the bullet, spend the money, and put the red line brakes on it, and be done with it. If you own a Cirrus today, or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. In the overall scheme of things, how are the insurance companies treating uh, Stearman ownership? Um, I would say that uh, my liability insurance is running, I take a guess and say $600 a year. Mm -hmm. I would say in the first year of ownership, if you're a new Stearman pilot, get the in motion, get the not in motion, and have that coverage because if you ground loop it, you're covered. There are companies that specialize in, in Stearman insurance, and the higher time in uh, Stearman pilot you are, of course, the lower yeah. the premium is. Well, Steve, we appreciate uh, spending a little bit of time with you and your Stearman, and we look forward to seeing you out and about.